morning and welcome to our services on today. Hey folks, today is Palm Sunday. And uh, you know, we're about to end into that time of resurrection coming soon. And uh, But you know, it's good to be reminded of where we're headed. You know, Jesus said he is the resurrection and he's the light. And uh, that that no man can come to the Father but through him. And I just want to encourage us today, as we enter into our time of worship today, I want you to like, share, and subscribe. And remember today that it is Palm Sunday. As they was entering into Jerusalem, they were singing a song, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And you know that's the highest praise that we can give to the Lord today. So I want to encourage you. Let's go before the Lord as we worship him today. Father, we thank you. And we bless you for this day, and we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your word. We thank you for Holy Spirit today. And thank you, Father, as we enter into this season again, Lord, to just worship you and to be reminded of the things that you went through for us and to put us into a place that we can enjoy the abundant life that you've already come to give us. We bless you today, and we appreciate you and all that you've done and you're doing in our lives. And we pray for our audience today, Lord, that Every ear is anointed to hear you anointing our lips to speak forth your word. We speak as the organs of God today. We thank you, Father God, that the word of the Lord have a free course. And we just give you all praise and we give you worship and glory and honor. Hosanna, King of kings and the Lord of lords, the El Shaddai. You're the breast of one. You're the God that is more than enough. We exalt your name, which is above every name. Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. As we bless your high name today, we give you the praise. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's enter into a time of praise and worship to the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Lift your hands wherever you are and just let's center, let's center in and enter into the Holy of Holies. Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to see another Sunday, another day to praise and to worship you, to bless your holy name. God, we love you and we adore you this morning, for there is none like you. On this Palm Sunday, we celebrate your triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And just like they welcomed you into that city, we welcome you right now to this service. We say Hosanna in the highest, for you are worthy to be praised all day, every day. Amen. Come on, help us sing Hosanna. Blessed be the king. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Just put your hands where you are. Put your hands together. Blessed be the King who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. We sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. We sing Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Blessed be the King. Hallelujah, blessed be the King. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the King who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. That's it. Come on, let's sing that again. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Jesus, the King, the King, who comes, 
comes in the name of the Lord. We're going to sing that one more time. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Blessed be the King, blessed be the King, blessed be the King. Blessed be the King, blessed be the King, hallelujah. Blessed be the King, blessed be the King, be the King. Come on, put your hands together. Be the King, and bless His name. The King, blessed be the King, blessed be the King, blessed be the King. Yeah, blessed be the King, hallelujah. Blessed be the King, hallelujah. Blessed be the King. Who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be the King. Blessed be you, Lord God. Lord God, wherever we are, our hands are lifted right now before you, saying that you, we, we welcome you. We welcome you into our space. We welcome you into our hearts this morning. We welcome you into this service to do what you will, to speak to us, to speak to our hearts, Lord, so that we may hear what you would desire for us to know. So, Lord God, we say welcome. Welcome to you. Wherever you are, just say that. Just welcome. Welcome, Lord. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord God. Oh, welcome into this place. Oh, welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Sing welcome. Welcome into this place. We sing welcome, welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our head. And we lift our hearts as we offer, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Let's sing that again. Welcome, welcome into this place. We sing welcome, welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our we lift our heart lift our, as we offer offer up this praise unto your so we lift our hands, so we lift our hands, and we lift our hearts, our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands. For up, we offer up 
this praise unto your name. Oh, Lord God, we welcome you right now. Wherever you are, in your room, in your car, wherever you may be, center in on the Holy Spirit right now. Throw off every distraction right now. Lift your hands before the Lord. When you lift your hands, you say, God, you are my source and you are my strength. So lift your hands before him right now and say, God, I welcome you. Emmanuel, you are with me. I welcome you. Picture on that day as he was marching into Jerusalem. How all the people around were in awe of him. How they were so glad that Jesus had came to town, that he had came in their midst. I bet we can't even imagine how excited they were because we are very preserved and we're so a bit far removed from that time. But put your mind back during that time. Imagine you seeing Jesus Christ for the very first time in all of his glory, all of his majesty, physically seeing him. What would that mean to you? How excited would you be? The only thing the only thing I could do, I don't even have words to describe it as you can tell. The only thing I could say is holy. Holy, holy, I stand in awe of you, Lord God, for you are holy. There is none higher than you, God. I stand in awe of you. Let's stand in awe of him this morning. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. So lift your voice and sing Hosanna, Hosanna. the beauty of holiness Santa, in the highest in the highest Hosanna 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 Lord, 
Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are filled with, are filled with, are filled with your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just worship him wherever you are. For he's holy, he's beautiful, he's mighty, he's righteous, he's just, he's true, he's pure. Oh, he's your friend, he's your counselor. Hallelujah. We welcome you into this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning, Breath of Life, and welcome to Bell News. Today, all Connect groups will meet via Zoom for General Assembly at 1015 a.m. We will not have individual classes. Go to bolcc.org, click Connect Groups for website link information. BOLCC Widows Fellowship Zoom meeting will meet today, March 28th at 3 o'clock p.m. Please contact Karen Pugh for additional information. Saturday, April 3rd, the Men of Valor will meet via Zoom at 9 o'clock a.m. And the Women of Virtue will also meet Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. via Zoom. Please see Barbara Martin for additional information. We will not have Connect Groups on Easter Sunday, April 4th. Connect Groups will resume the following Sunday. You will be receiving a survey in the mail concerning the church's reopening. Please answer the questions and return as soon as possible. If you have any questions, please contact the office at 901-373-7219. If your address has changed, please call and let us know. Pastor wants to hear from everyone. That concludes Bell News. Have a blessed week and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. E is for Easter coming in soon. A is for angels near the tomb. S is for stones rolling away. T is for tomb from empty the day. E, e is for morning, everyone was glad. O is for risen, don't be sad. He'll, He'll come, come back, back for us one day. day. Until, until, until then, we will watch, we will, we will watch and pray. One day, Jesus came to tell the people about their garments and they all began to shout and cheer, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus is here. Christ the Lord is risen today. Angels rolled the stone away from the tomb wherein he lay. Little children come and sing, glory, glory to the King, Christ the Lord of everything. of mine.
win unless you know the code. cross in my pocket. I carry a cross in my pocket, a simple reminder to me of the fact that I'm a Christian and not ashamed to be. No, this cross is not magic. It's not a good luck charm, but it reminds me when I plead blood, I'm protected from all harm. It helps me to be mindful of what salvation costs and to always share the good news to the hurting and the lost. So I carry a cross in my pocket to remind no one but me that Jesus is Lord of my life. He paid the price for me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Jesus died for you and me. H, I, J, K, L, M, N. Jesus died for a sinful man. O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. I believe in his word is true. VW, I'm not through. XYZ, now he lives in me. My emoji resurrection story. Resurrection is about Jesus coming to pay for our sin because he loves us so much. St. Saint, Saint John chapter 3, verse 16. Jesus had to day, die on the day that we now call Good Friday to pay for all the times he sin and disobey God. Mark chapter, chapter 15, verse 37 through 38. After Jesus died, he was in the tomb for three days before something amazing happened. Mark chapter 15, verse 42 through 47. When, when Jesus' friend, when Jesus' friends got to the tomb, they found an angel who said, Jesus is alive! Luke chapter 24, verse 2 through 7. Before Jesus went back to heaven, he, he told his disciples to tell everyone the good news, that whoever, whoever believes in Jesus as his savior can live can live with him in heaven forever. Happy resurrection. White is for the holiness, the lifestyle that wins. Purple is for the passion that helps him endure the pain. Pink is just my favorite color and forever Jesus reigns. Rejoice, it's resurrection. Let not your heart be troubled, let not your soul be sad. Resurrection is a time of joy, God's love has made us glad. Glad to know that God made it possible for men to have their sins forgiven and like him to live again. 
So regardless of the season, may the resurrection story make us partakers of his glory. Thank you so much for watching this program, and now Pastor Moss. All right, it's offering time. Come on, let's give it up for offering time. You know, as I was into time of meditation this morning, I was just kind of seeking the Lord concerning the offertory scripture today, and I got one for you today. It may be a little different, you may say, but I think it's more of an exhortation, but maybe just a little bit where the Lord may be chastising us a little bit about keeping our hearts pure in our giving, keeping our motive right in everything that we go to do. And you know, there's a scripture, uh, the Bible says that when, when uh, the, they were seeking for a uh, king and they saw Saul and, uh, you know, a lot of thought, well, this, it got to be it. And the Lord said, don't look, don't look at that, their outward. He's a man looks at the outward, but God looks at the heart. And I want to just encourage you to keep that heart pure before God today, even in our time of giving, in our time of tithes and offering. The scripture I want to share is coming from Matthew chapter 23. Verse 23 from the New Living Translation says, What sorrow await you teachers of religion and law, uh, laws? Are you Pharisee? And then he called them hypocrites. For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb garden. But you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the most important things. What he's really encouraging us today is keep our motives pure, keep our hearts right before the Lord, even when we're giving our tithes and offering. Don't just say, well, I'm just bringing this, you know, as if it's something just to do. God still deal with our hearts. He still with our, deal with our motive, our intent, keeping that heart pure. And I don't know about you, I want to keep a sensitive heart in everything that I do. I don't want to just go through the motions of, of life. But I believe that our giving should be a form of worship to the Lord. That we worship him with our tithes and offering. We worship him by telling him thank and, and praising him and honoring him. Giving him praise for all of the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us. So let's, let's thank the Lord. Let's worship the Lord with our tithes and offering. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity we can bring our tithes and offering before you. We do this willfully. We do it cheerfully. We do it as an act of worship to you from our hearts. Thank you for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us, like our jobs and our businesses. And we thank you, Father God, for even our investments that are, that are coming forth. We just thank you for more than enough. You are our El Shaddai. You're the all-sufficient God. And we just thank you this morning. We want you to know, Lord, it's our prayer and our desire that you will prosper us and increase us, that we can prosper others, that we can increase others, that we can be a blessing to the families of the earth, that we can be able to share the gospel across the globe, Lord God. Use us mightily to carry out your will, your plan, and your purpose in this earth. You said in your scripture that you give us power to get wealth, that we, you may establish your covenant. And Lord, what is out of prayer and desire is to work with you, to cooperate with you in carrying the gospel across the globe. We honor you now with our substance and the first fruit of our increase. We thank you and we praise you for filling our bond with plenty and causing our presence to burst out with new wine. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name and all of God's people say it, amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's get ready for the Word of God is coming forth. Well, praise God. Glory be to God today. Good to see everybody with us, all of those that are with us. We thank God for you. 
And uh, we will believe in God that you're getting ready to be blessed now as we bring the word forward today. And I want you to listen very closely to the word of God today because it will be a great blessing to you. Uh, you know, everybody is, is purpose-minded these days. And uh, it, what the things we started sharing last week will continue this week. And you stay with it, you'll find out how to stay focused in your purpose and uh, not, not varying off because there's an enemy out there, a spiritual en enemy, and uh, he's trying to always get us sidetracked. So we're talking to you today about don't let the devil rewrite your future. And too many people they, they, get, they just slide off, off course real easily, and they don't know they've, they've come off course. And uh, we want to, you will see some of that today. It's going to be a real good message. So what I want you to do is bow your heads with me, and we'll get into the Word of God. Father, we are thankful today. We give you glory and praise for who you are, all the wonderful things that you have done in our life. We praise you. We thank you, Father God, for enabling us to be in this place right now. Though being virtual, we are still together. We are drawing from the same spirit because there's no time nor distance in the, in the realm of the spirit. So we are glad to be here today. We are feeding on the word of God and being glad about it. And Father God, we set, we set ourselves to be a, a to be uh, focused, to not be hindered by anything that we may see or go on around us. We know that the Word of God is our life, and we have come today to be filled up with life. To this end, Father, I yield this vessel to you in its entirety, spirit, soul, and body. It's my desire that you would receive it and use it in any way you have need today. We thank you for it and give you glory and praise for it in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, amen. Praise God. All right. We want to go out from today using, our, using as our theme scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. And we're doing it out of the NIV Bible. Jeremiah 29, 11. Doing it out of the NIV Bible. It reads, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. And, uh, 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 you know, another word for that expected, is a synonym would be, could be a, a hope. A, a full hope is what he's saying. An expected end. And, and, uh, we don't want to let the devil sidetrack us there. Now, we were, we were talking about that a lot last week. And today, we're going to look at some examples of what we uh, did last week. We're going to watch this principle in the Bible, looking at the principle in the Bible, how not to get, get, get off track and the devil rewrite your future, because he's always trying to do that. And God has the plan, the master plan he wants you to have, he has given us as mankind a, a plan, and then he wants us to, to have particular plans in our, in our own lives. So I want you to turn, turn in your Bible now, and, and let's uh, look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Going back to, to the beginning, to, to man's beginning, praise God. Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26. Glory to God, hallelujah. I'll, be, I'll, I'll read through 26 to 29. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion, listen closely. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over all, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over everything that moveth upon the earth. Praise God. So that, that's God now. And we are looking at, we're looking right, right now at God's, God's prosperous plan for Adam. Now, the word Adam simply means man. The word Adam means man. And we're looking at God. So when God made Adam, created Adam, and, 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 and made Eve, then God right here gives them their purpose, gives them their, their, their assignment. And if they, if they stay on focus with it, then they'll realize an abundant life all, all this to, all, for all mankind. Remember, Adam is the head of man, just like Eve is the head of, of, of female. And, and God gave them this, he charged them with this purpose when he created them. And notice that thing is, is full of light, nothing evil in it, nothing wicked in it. God gave him a plan that he would live in abundance all his life. And he wants that, he wants that for all mankind because Adam was the, was the seed to all men that's in this earth. So the devil, the devil was around listening to all this. He's seeing what God is saying to Adam and what he's turning over to Adam. And in there, in there he said, have dominion. That word dominion means supreme rule. A lot of times people be wanting to get God to do things in the earth, and most folk do it. They, they want God to do things that he has told man to do. And because God told man to do it, God fathers, fathers follows protocol. God never gets out of, out of, out of, out of joint in protocol, see. And, uh, uh, so he, he told him to have dominion over everything that move it, everything that move it. Now, so we want to watch and see how Adam took all that authority, all that power, all those promises, and just, 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 just threw them away, just, just gave them over to another, another force, uh, and, and didn't, even think, didn't even think about what he was really doing. See, he, he knows he was disobeying God, and, and he, 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 didn't, he didn't think far, far enough to know, though, that he was turning over. His, his, rewrite, his future is being rewritten. God had, had, a, had a future for him, and we just read it, all these things. But, and then the devil comes in, and the devil wants to have Adam let him rewrite his future, and the devil won't just come up to you and say that. He'll, 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 you know, lead, try to lead you into that, that way uh, uh, inconspicuously. He's trying to lead you, get a hold of you without you even knowing about it, you see. So I'll, watch this because so many people, God had plans for you. And know this, every time God need, has, has a need in the earth to help mankind, a child is born. And that child has a purpose for a need, the, the, the purpose for a need. Amen. The devil doesn't want that, that child to ever complete that, his assignment. That's, that's so many people now off assignment in the body of Christ. They try, they're trying to be somebody else. They're trying to do something that God didn't send them into, earth to, into the earth to do. And they are unhappy, they're miserable, they, they, they get mad at other folk and all this kind of stuff. And they don't know that they have let the devil rewrite their, their future. And, and uh, so we, we have to be on the lookout, on what? On God, all the time, watching out for the enemy, rather, all the time, because he's sliding and sneaky and all that kind of stuff. And before you know it, he, he will have pushed you off course. And you, you'll be working on somebody else, somebody, someone else's assignment. So 
We want to get into, into this today now. Now, now look at, let's look, let's look at uh, ver, uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Notice, he gave him the purpose. He put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, thereof thou shalt surely die. Get a hold of that. So the devil's, the devil's thing now is to make sure that Adam and Eve eat off this tree because he's wanting he's want to write, rewrite their future. Get a hold of that now. God gave, him, gave Adam this plan. It's a, a plan for all mankind. Adam didn't know that part of it, but it would, it would, it would have had all of us having the abundant life. That's why when Jesus came into the earth, he made the statement, I, I, I come that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. Amen. Now notice, see, that's why Adam came. That's why God was doing with Adam. And when Adam fell, God had to get a new man in the earth. And we know now that this new man that God brought into the earth we, is Jesus. And we also know that spiritually, this, this J Jesus, is the head of the body of Christ. So this one man, and I'm saying this really fast, I know a lot of you might, might fall off here. This one man is part of that one spiritual man that God created in the earth to replace Adam, the first Adam. The Bible calls, calls uh, uh, the body of Christ, calls, calls Jesus rather, the, the last Adam. And Jesus is our head. We are the body of Christ. So God had a plan for us to, to not to have need ever in, in the earth. Amen. Shouldn't be in a need, anything that, that, that comes up and, and folk don't have, and folk, you know, need, have need and can't fo get food, can't get clothing and all that. That's not of God. The devil has written too many futures. And the devil right here, got Adam out, out off scale. He got Adam going the wrong way, got Adam and Eve going the wrong way because uh, they, they listened to him. So we, I, we want to show you that. Now, obedience would have perpetually maintained the plan that God originally gave Adam. We could have been living in flower beds of ease right now if Adam hadn't, hadn't rewrote, let the devil rewrite his future. And that's where so many people are right now. God, God told you what to do. You don't like what God told you to do, and you try to get into other people's walk. I had, I've tasted out of that, you see. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You want to you wanna carry out your assignment regardless of all the challenges and all the temptations that the enemy be trying to trying to snatch away from you. And we don't want to let him get a hold of it. So you got to always, always be aware. Se seven days a week, 24 hours a day, you got to be aware that the devil is, is, is trying to, to, to pull you over off, the, off of God's plan for you. He's trying to let you rewrite the plan that, that God gave you so he can put, he can fill in uh, other blanks and other things that you, you don't even know that he, he's rewriting that thing, you see. So you have to always be full of the word of God, feeding on the word of God to always be checking yourself to see if you're getting off course or if you're walking, on the, walking in the narrow that God told you to walk so you can always walk in abundance, always walk in health, always walk in, in holiness and godliness and always be, have a happy life. God wants you to have a happy life. He wants you to be full of joy. 
Amen. And always have the victory. Glory to God. So uh, uh, we see God right here then telling, uh, telling him, you're going to die. You will not be able to live on this track I'm putting you on if you eat off of that tree, that one tree. I'm telling you which one it is. Do not eat off it. The day you do it, you're going to die. In other words, you're going to lose life. You won't have abundance life. The spirit of death, sin and death, will get a hold of you. We know that. Go back. Oh, you know, I'm not going now. But you go to the, to the book of Roma, and the Bible talks about the, 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 the spirit of life and the law of sin and death. And, 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 and you get that. See, that law of sin and death, when that get a hold of you, the devil has rewritten your future. Praise God. But don't, not to, not to, not to feel, feel lost or unable to get back because God gave us the power to repent. Amen. Now, I need to let you know that on the front end. Uh, uh, John 1, 9 says, uh, uh, God, God want, gave us a law to, for which we can use to repent. Amen. He said, we confess our sin. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and, and, and to uh, cleanse us. I'll, I'll just come back and make us clean, see? Just make us clean. And so I don't care how far you've gone, I don't care how, how raggedy you let things get, God has a, a, a way for you to get back to him and he, he can treat you like you never seen. He said, I'll cleanse you. I'll cleanse you, see? He said, you <laughs> God, you got to get to know this about God. Right now, God wants to be able to treat every person in the world as if sin never happened. Amen. Get a hold of that. That's why Jesus came to die for mankind so that they can have a brand new beginning. That's why when a person comes to the Lord, I don't care how they've been living, I don't care how bad they've let the devil rewrite their future, if they come to the Lord, they got, God makes them brand new people from the inside out. Hallelujah. If a person be in Christ, if a person be in Christ, he's a brand new person, the Bible says. Get a hold of that. And you can, you can, you can rewrite that future right now. And Jesus Christ will be there for you to help. So he wants you, he wants you now to use the, use the, the, the verse on repentance so that he can get you back into a place to where you can, your future can, can carry on where God first in, in, and initially gave it to you. It can carry on and, and the enemy can't stop you. If you, if, you keep, if you walk in the ways of God's word, even if you slip, you can go back to God with a repentant heart and get back in the right road. You can get back on the right, right trail God has for you. Praise God. So you got to know there's always you can, you, you, you can get back in, into good, good fellowship with the Lord. Now, uh, <clears throat> let's, let's go down to Genesis chapter 3 now. God, now remember, we leaving, we leaving uh, Adam where God is telling him the thing not to do. And, and I'll read it again from verse uh, 15, chapter 2. It said, and the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden uh, to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Get a hold of that. Thou shalt surely die. Now, now, so God said, you can have every tree in, the, in, in, this, in this garden, you can eat from it. But this one, don't eat it, because when you eat it, you'll die. Praise God. Now, let's move down to and start in chapter 3 here. says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God made, had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, 
had God said, you shall not eat of the tree of the garden of Eden. Now notice, he's subtle. He's coming in real subtle-like, having starting a conversation with this woman. And, and nowadays, he would be coming into your mind, giving you, giving you thoughts and temptations. That's how the devil tricks us now. He, give, he, comes, he uses your mind and sends thoughts into him. That, 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 that's how the devil tempts you now. He deals with your thoughts. That's why the Bible says in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, be, you, you know, you can, you can cast down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If, it, if it's coming in, how do you know when it's exalting itself over the knowledge of God? You know that when, when, when the, it goes against something the Bible says. Now, how, how can you know, know, know what the Bible says? You got to read it. You got to read it or have somebody read it to you. If you can't read, get you, get you a tape, the Bible on tape or something. You got to get the information in you because if you don't, Satan is going to entice you and you're not going to know that he's, he's pulling you away from the word of God. This is what way he's doing, uh, Eve. They know better. God didn't give them but one thing to do to cause them to lose abundant life. And that one thing was not to eat of the tree that's, that, of the knowledge of good and evil. That was what was it was, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And here, the devil has no business in here trying to deal with their man. Notice, when we go, if, if we go back, remember when we were in a, Chapter one, and and uh, 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 when the, when when God told, was telling him everything that he had, everything how life was gonna be, and what what he was over. Uh, in the time, the devil started talking something that wasn't listed in there. Satan should have shut him down because God told him he had authority over what, over what everything that what creep it. Adam, Adam, yeah, he, he's, he had authority over everything that creepeth up on the earth. Now that devil, that, that, that serpent was in the earth and he was moving. He, he had, he had, a, he, uh, Adam had authority over that. The devil was moving, then Adam could tell him what to do. Amen. And he should have turned instantly and said, I rebuke you. Get out of this God and never come back. Well, that, that, that would have been the end of it. Yeah. For all mankind, that would have been the end of it. But in reality, simmering back in his mind, <laughs> he's wanting to find out why God doesn't want him to eat off of this one tree. And then that's the way the folk are. The thing that God says, I don't want you to do, that's what the devil starts to, in your mind, sending thoughts about, I wonder why God doesn't want you to eat off of that. I wonder why you don't want God, why God doesn't want you to know what this is. And you, and, and, and you start wondering too, instead of rebuking that, that thought and casting that thought down. That's how the devil deals with people now, with thoughts. That's how he tempts you, with thoughts. Get a hold of it. It's a thought first before it can come out of your mouth. It's a thought. And the Bible says right there in 2 Corinthians 10, 10 uh, 5, cast it down. Cast means to throw. Throw it down. Say, I rebuke that. I will not make that choice. See, what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm maintaining what's in the future for me. I'm maintaining the, the, the thing that God has chosen to, for me to have, the kind of life God has chosen for me to have. I, I'm guarding it now when I speak to thoughts and not let thoughts live in me. Amen. See, when a thought comes to you, you can either throw it down, cast it down, or you can start thinking about it, meditating about it. If you cast it down, you kill the thought before it could take power against you. Yeah. But if you go to meditating it, starting figuring out how it can help you and, and cause you to grow and have this and have that, you are letting the devil get the chance to rewrite your future and you won't know what hit you. 
You, want, you, you think somebody else treating you wrong, somebody else misusing you. Everything happened to you, somebody else's fault, but it was you who let that thought in. It was you who didn't, didn't cast that thought down. Don't, so don't forget that. God had told Adam what, what to do, how he, can, how he could stay in, 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 in power in the earth. All he had to do was not touch that tree, not eat, that, eat off of that tree, rather. And here he is, here come the devil, easing in with messing with Adam's wife, talking to her. And uh, Adam, Adam heard what, she, what, what they were talking about and didn't do anything about it. He didn't do anything about it because in the back of his mind, I believe that he really, really wanted to know how that fruit, that fruit tasted anyway. Get a hold of that. The Bible said, the Bible said, well, let's go over there to, uh, where is it? Uh, James, no, no, yeah, James 3, I think. James 3. I think it's James, where it talks about the thoughts. I mean, the uh, temptations. Uh, James 3. Ooh. No, it's not James. Yeah. James 1 and uh, 13. James 1. Yeah, 1. one. I started James 1, 12. <clears throat> Blessed is the man... That, that endure temptation. No, see, I'm trying to deal with you about this temptation here now because, because when I said Adam probably wanted to do it anyway, this is where I'm talking from. He said, blessed is the man that endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. When he's tried, he shall receive the crown of life. That's why you don't want to entertain thoughts you know of violating the scriptures. You don't want to even entertain them. You run from them. You, you cast them down. You, you jump up and holler, whatever. You got to holler at the folk. You, because what, what he's, he's trying to mess you up, trying to get, stop you from being crowned with God's favor. Man, I wish you'd get this. He said, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of glory, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Now, when he said, when the Lord, had, when the Lord talks about those who love him, he's talking about those who obey him. Amen. You can get that in, in the gospel of John, uh, chapter uh, 14, down around verse 22 or somewhere in there. But, but he said, uh, in verse 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Listen to the next line. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Amen. But when every man is tempted, when, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and entice. That's why, that's why I said. I think uh, Adam had been wanting to taste of that tree all along because he got tempted. Yeah. Eve as well, they got tempted. When, when did God say a person get, is tempted? When he's drawn away of his own love. So he had been lusting for that tree uh, way before he, he and, he and uh, uh, Eve had, had been tempted for that, with that thing for way before that, had, that it had grown into lust. And when you finish lust, then you're on your way to death. The wages of sin is death. You, you, and when I say you're on your way to death, I'm talking about you're on your way to yielding to, the, to the, uh, uh, the, the, that old spirit of death, see. Uh, 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 and and, and you, want, you want what you want to do. You want to cast down every thought and every imagination before it gets a toehold in your heart before it gets a, a toehold in your mind. Just cast it right down, and God got a, a, a glory, a crown of glory that he'll put on you when you would endure temptation. Yeah. 
But see, you, you don't be hollering. Well, God know I'm weak. God know I'm just a man. I'm just a woman. God know I, my, my spirit is willing and I'm just weak. God, this Bible tells you what to do. And God, God will give you power and strength as you feed on this word and meditate in it. You'll grow till you can get to that point to where you know how to resist temptation. Adam knew he was in charge of everything. He knew that he was, was the God of the earth at that time. And let's go back over there. What we're looking at now, we're looking at the devil having been kicked out of, hell, out of heaven for sin, for, be, for becoming the devil. <laughs> and when I say for becoming the devil, I don't want to deal with that because it's a whole lot you have to know. Uh, uh, when he, he became the devil because he, he fell from grace with God. He was always in, in heaven, you see, with God. And then he, he wanted to take God's cr uh, throne. And, and Jesus said, I saw him fall fast as lightning. Get a hold of that. So Adam knew, you'll see down in here, Adam knew that they shouldn't be doing that thing, but he just, 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 he, been, he didn't let that lust get a hold of him. Let's go on. Verse uh, 3, chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto, unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And watch the woman. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Notice. She wanted to say, I can do whatever I want to do. I can eat of all these trees. <laughs> I can just see that, sister. Uh, no, uh, verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is the, in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Now, personally, I believe what, that's where she lost good ground. I believe she's telling a lie right there. I didn't hear God telling her that over there. When we was reading, he didn't notice. He didn't say anything about don't touch the tree. He said, don't eat of it. Didn't he? Yeah. And now here, here she goes. She adds on, we can't even touch it. And when the devil, notice, let's read on. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to that point. Uh, uh, in verse 4, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat, ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good of good and evil. Now, get a hold of that. When, when the devil said, said uh, back up in verse 3, when Eve said, rather, ye shall not eat, neither shall ye touch it. God didn't say you couldn't, couldn't touch that thing. And I can just see myself right now how the devil would have gone over there and touched it. And said, you see, it didn't anything happen to me. See, God hadn't told him that. God, God wouldn't have dealt with the devil about that part because he left everything in Adam's control. Adam is over here. I mean, this, 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 this fallen angel over here tempting this woman through that serpent. He's over there doing that. And uh, uh, serpent said in verse 4, woman uh, said, un, un, said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, your eyes shall be open, your eyes shall be open. Her eyes already open. God told her, don't eat. That's all she knew. That's all she had to do was not, not eat. Your eyes shall be open. Uh, and you shall be as, as gods, knowing good and evil. See, uh, so, so, so don't ever want to be what God is. That's how the devil got kicked out of heaven. He saw God on the throne, on the throne, and all the angels worshiping God and, and Satan exhorted himself to he who wanted the throne. 
He wanted to be a throne, on that throne. And he got, he got kicked out of, out of heaven like that. God wants you to, 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 to love him. He wants you to copy him, but he doesn't want you to be him. Praise God. He doesn't want you to, to try to take over the position that God had. So he goes on in verse uh, uh, 6, and he said, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the, and the tree. No, wait a minute, this thing pleasant to the eyes. It's good, to, good for food. So all of these things, that, all of these things is what the devil used to entice us with. It's, it's good for food. <laughs> no, I do, I say this. I guess I do. Uh, uh, uh. Now, she's not hungry. She's not wanting to eat because she's hungry. She's wanting to eat because she's lusting. This is why folk eat stuff they know going to make them sick and all that kind of stuff. They don't be hungry. They want it to be good. They lusting for this taste. And oh, let me, let me hush. <laughs> but the, notice that she, she saw it was good to eat. It is not good to eat because it's on the wrong tree. It, it's no way it can be good to eat. She's going by taste. She's going by how she thinks it's going to taste. But God say, don't eat it. Amen. Amen. Now, God got, got two chapters in the, in the Old Testament of fools. He tell people not to eat, and people go ahead and eat anyway and holler, uh, uh. I'm born again right now. I can eat what I want to eat. I know you can, but it's still going to have the same effect on your body. It's going to have the same effect. That's why so many folk are sick and, and, and you know, got stuff working in the, in, in, inside of their, their, their body, trying to kill them and all of that because they, 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 we didn't adhere to what, the, what God said in the Bible. I know he was talking to the Jew but it'll work for everybody, praise the Lord. Uh, when he was telling, all, telling everybody that if, if they, if they would, would obey him, they could be rich. He'd prosper them and, make, and bless them real good to where they wouldn't have any need. Now, we, we want to take that part of it, but we don't want to take the part about to eat, see? So, so the first thing the devil got her with was food. What is the first thing uh, the devil tempted Jesus with when he, after he was baptized and came back into, into, into the, to, to, uh, uh, came back up on that, came back in, when, after he was baptized, then he, he, came, he came up and the devil started tempting him on Temptation Mountain. What's the first thing he hit him with? If you be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. In other words, you see, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil hit him with what he knew he wanted, food. And I believe the devil probably found a way to have that food smelling like buttered bread, hot buttered bread, that mountain, rather. And, and he hit, hit Jesus with food. That's the first thing he wanted. And I know he hit, he hit uh, Eve with food. And she, she, she bit right there. She, 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 she bit off that tree. Let, let's go where I was at in the sixth, sixth, and when the sixth verse. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, beauty. Food, be, food, beauty. How many people sin? How many people break up marriages because they saw somebody that's a honk or somebody that's built like a, a what, I don't know what they say folk, women built with these days. But when they looking really, really, you know, got a good shape and all of that stuff and a fine face, fair face and good hair fixed all up, men, men just go at what? Lusting. And now other women are going lusting. Men are going lusting for other men, all that kind of stuff. What, what, are, they, what are they following after? They, they, no, what, what was the second thing here? Pleasant to the eyes. Pleasant to the eyes. Child, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want them to ugly. I, I, see, I see young people, have, have, see young men that, that's working hard and, and, and living for God, and the folk are holler, he, he don't look right. He don't look right. I, I can't have that. 
and they would go to somebody that beat their brain out, brains out, cuss them out, and all, dog them out, uh, 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 go lying with other women all around them and, and, and dogging the children out, all that kind of stuff. But they were cool. They were what people call cool and pleasant to look at. See, I don't know where I'm going into all this. Let's, let's go on. So it was pleasant to the eye, a tree to be desired to make one wise. Want to, want to, uh, to know more about the world than she knew about God. She had the word from God to don't eat. I don't care what, how, much it, how many professors come. I don't care how many, how many heavy learning people come. Don't eat from that tree. You can't get smart enough to, to, to eat that tree, eat from that tree, and then not, and not harm you. That's what she didn't understand. It's not that much education. That's what got the enemy down. He wanted to be smarter than God. He wanted God's play. Say, say, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her unto her husband with her, and she and he did eat. In other words, he was with her. He was looking, listen, listening at the same thing she was listening to and wouldn't say a word, wouldn't say a word. That's the way, that's the way a whole lot of brothers let homes get messed up now. They see women or children messing up something and don't say a word. Especially if it's a church stuff. Try, <laughs> you put folk, women out first instead of being first, learning and feeding on the word of God so you can teach your children and teach your wives and things uh, 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 what God's way is. That's how he blew up everything right here. He ate with her. What has happened now? His future is being rewritten. What God had written for him to be ruler over everything, to have dominion over everything that creepeth in the earth, he didn't take dominion over this serpent who had a, 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 the evil spirit, the wicked spirit in it. Amen. He didn't take authority over it. He should have said when, he, when that serpent started first mentioning about eating that tree, he, he should have started casting out devil. Get out of this God. Do not come back in here. And if he, if he told him not to come back in here, he, the devil would have had to adhere to it because Adam had supreme rule over that thing. Amen. Amen. He had supreme rule over it. And at this point, his future is rewritten. And we want to get down now to real quickly. Uh, let, let's look at, uh, let's go, well, I'll read on down there. And the eyes, no, no, let's go on down to three. Uh, yeah, we're we right close to it. Verse, yeah, I'm going to just read on down. Ain't one verse down. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Now, this is the knowledge they got, that they were naked. Whoa, man, I'm saying I'm going to have to deal with this again. When, when, <laughs> that they were naked. Now, remember, well, you, you won't see it yet. When, when, yeah, you, you haven't seen it. We'll, 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 we'll get to it. Well, we're in that verse. And, that, and the eyes of them were both open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now, note, note it. They ate to get smart, and now they're trying to make clothes with leaves. They're making leaves. They're making suits out of leaves. They're making clothes out of leaves. The first breath, uh, the high wind, what's going to happen to a leaf? It's going to blow. <laughs> They're smart now. They've eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They knew God, so they always knew good. Now, then they, now they're eating off of evil, and they got smart, so they're making them some clothes. Now, why are they, why they making clothes? Because they saw their nakedness. And what did they do? What ha what, they hadn't ever seen their nakedness before. Now, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel 
that God is a consuming fire from the loins up and, he, and, and, and he's a consuming fire from the loins down and, and God created Adam in, in his image. Adam and Eve were made in his image. So when they, when they were talking to God and, and all of that and God had come down and, and, and talk with them, each one of them were clothed like God was clothed. He, that, that fire, that glory, that was the glory of God that enclosed him. And the, the, the same glory that enclosed Adam, I mean, uh, Adam, the same glory enclosed Eve until they ate off that tree. Now their clothes gone, the glory that, that was on God is still there when he gets there, and, but when, they're gone. What that, what that mean? They did. They spiritually did. The glory is gone. Get a hold of that. The glory is gone. They saw that they, their glory was gone. And they, and they got smart. And they're going to make some, make, some make, make, her, make clothes and got messed up. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in, in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the God. Why they hiding themselves? Because now they know that they are unrighteous. They're not worthy. They, they thinking I'm not worthy. I'm scared of God. That's when fear came into the earth. No fear was in the earth before then. Fear came into the earth. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, He, didn't, he can't say anything because I'm out of time. <laughs> I'm out of time. We're going to have to pick up on this next week again. Praise God. We'll stop right here. Uh, there might be someone with us right now. You've never received God in your life. Your life has been rewritten, see? Your life was written when God sent you into this earth. When you came into this earth, God had a plan for you. Now you, you can't get to it because you are away from God. You have to get born again. You have to be born again, not, not from your mama's stomach this time, but from God, you got to be born from a bull. That's what again means. If you looked it up in the third chapter of John and read about that born again, it says born from a bull. That's a spiritual baptism. And humans, humans now have to receive that before they can come into the family of God again, come into the presence of God again with favor. And God wants you to come into his family. So, I, I want to lead you to the Lord. Any Christian, any Christian can lead you to the Lord. But I'm talking to you right now. You might as well, you know, let me do it right here and right now. God wants you to come into his family. Lord, I'm praying right now for everybody that's hearing the sound of my voice. Any of them that have not received Jesus as, as their Lord and <clears throat> come into your kingdom and come into your family, I pray right now that you would touch their hearts. Let them open their hearts a little so they can see the love that you are, 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 are having for them. I'm praying right now in Jesus' name. Now, if that's you, you never have received him, I want you to just follow me in this prayer. It's going to be a real quick one. I mean, it doesn't take a long time, but just follow me. I want you to, wherever you are, to close your eyes to, to keep things from around you from taking, you know, focus, unfocus, refocusing your attention. And just, just say the words that I say. Father God, I come to you just as I am. I know that you know all about me. I, I won't try to sham or anything. I'm just giving up to you. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sin. I also believe that you raised him from the dead for my justification. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, live in my life, make something wonderful and beautiful of my life. I surrender all to you. Now, Father God, I believe 
that I'm born again. I'm brand new from the inside out. I'm saved, I'm whole, I'm clean, I'm healed, and I'm on the road to prosperity and an abundant life. Thank you, Lord. I am saved. All right, if you prayed that prayer with me, it's just that easy. Just that easy. You are now a child of God. And, and God wants to start treating you like you're his child. Amen. So you'll need some things that you need to know some things, uh, what you do now. And we're going to have, I want you to focus your attention on the screen now so you can know the next steps that you, you, you ought to take. If you just prayed that prayer with me, welcome to the family. I have a gift for you. It's a short, easy to read book, but it's powerful, life changing, and will help you on your new journey. I want to give it to you free in order for you to develop a solid foundation. So contact me and let me know you'd like to receive it. You can request it by calling our pastoral support number or using the postal address. That information should be on your screen. I thank you for taking this first step toward your new life. All right, praise God. Just do what, that, what, you, what I told you to do from the screen and you, you will come into contact with some other Christians that, that can help you and, and have, you, have fellowship with you and uh, get, that, you know, get that book and, and do what it says and you, you can be walking with other believers in fellowship. Now, if you, if you happen to be close to the church, you can come by here any day, any, any day, and from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Tuesday through Friday and, and pick it up. Otherwise, uh, you can get the thing off the screen, mail it in. I just want you to get it, get it. I need you to have it, praise God, and it's free. You won't have to spend any money. It's free. All right. There might be some of you now. I like to do this. I love to pray for the sick. You might, you might have sickness and disease in your body. And I want to pray for you right now in that. Uh, get you well. God is a healer. Jesus is a healer. He came to, to save man's soul in every way. And one of those ways is being saved from, from death, the death and sin before your time is up. Before your time is up, see. So the Bible says in, in 1st uh, uh, Peter 2.24 in the uh, Amplified Bible that we, by Jesus' stripes we have been healed. Say it like that, by his stripes we have been healed. So get a hold of that. If you're born again, you heal. Praise God. All you got to do is receive it. It's a, just accept it as, be, as you being healed. Praise God. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus for the manifestation of healing for every believer in my audience. I even pray for those who are not born again to receive their healing because Jesus received the stripes on his back before he went to the cross. We thank you, Father God, that from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, healing is flowing, manifesting in their body. We thank you, we give you glory, and we give you praise for it, in Jesus' name. And all of you who received that prayer said amen, amen, amen. All right, we certainly enjoyed being with you this week. Uh, we want you to have a, your best day today, today you ever had, praise God. And make sure, make sure that you begin to tell somebody else about the goodness of God. When the last time you took it up on yourself to talk about somebody about the goodness of God. That's what people need. They need a God that's good and a God that brings peace. Everybody's looking for that. Everybody's looking for that. All right, we're getting ready to leave you for now. Thank God for you. And, and as we leave you, I, I want to leave you with this. Always be aware that Jesus is Lord and holiness 
is the lifestyle that wins in this earth. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.